Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar and workshop series conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming management case study examinations happening in February 2024. And uh, my name is Nick. I'm one of the lead tutors and evaluators for MCS at TCS. So um, let's uh, look at the session outcomes. Um, so today's webinar will be a bit long, longer than uh, usual because uh, we have to cover a lot. So uh, first things first, um, I'm going to uh, focus your attention towards uh, uh, the pre seen document. And uh, you need to know, since you are playing the role of a finance manager, I highlighted this uh, in the first webinar. Um, so since you are the finance manager of this company, you have to be extremely conversant uh, about the uh, you know, external as well as internal dynamics of Kapka, uh, the company on which this time's uh, pre seen is based. So, um, and on top of that, just because you know about the internal and external dynamics, uh, it won't help you. You need to have uh, an in-depth understanding of, about how to apply this information when developing your answers, because uh, um, whenever you are providing recommendations or conducting evaluations, um, it needs to make uh, a sense, or so it needs to be aligned with uh, the internal as well as external dynamics of Kafka. And on top of that, it needs to make financial sense. So uh, with all these things in mind, I will highlight what you need to do uh, when applying prison information or what you need to focus on when applying prison information uh, within your answers. And on top of that, I will also uh, carry out um, an industry analysis partially based on the industry analysis slides which we have developed so that you'd uh, better understand uh, the external dynamics of your chosen company. And on top of that, uh, as the third part of the, tonight's webinar, I will be conducting a pre-seen analysis. Uh, mind you, our pre-seen analysis uh, videos consist of uh, four main elements, but uh, due to the time constraint, I cannot uh, ca carry out uh, or focus on all four areas. Instead, uh, I'm only going to focus on uh, the internal uh, dynamics of uh, uh, Kapka uh, as part of uh, tonight's webinar. And last but not least, I will uh, also focus your attention towards what you need to do uh, to rebound uh, from failure because there could be a set of uh, students who uh, attempted MCS previously, but unfortunately, who ended up failing. So you need to understand uh, what type of pitfalls you need to avoid uh, in order to be in a position to uh, achieve uh, a pass in your next sitting. So all these things will be covered in tonight's webinar. So before we get into the nitty gritties, I uh, uh, simply want to remind you about the upcoming webinars and workshops, uh, which we have scheduled for you. And mind you, all these uh, webinars and workshops are conducted free of charge, with the intention of ensuring that you are extremely conversant with uh, the technicalities behind the MCS exam, what you're supposed to achieve uh, when, when preparing for the examination. And on top of that, ensuring that you are conversant about uh, uh, how different uh, theoretical elements or syllabus content is tested uh, at this examination. So um, I, I want you, I invite you guys to uh, uh, be part and parcel of all these uh, weekly webinars. Uh, this is a good opportunity for you to get in touch with me so, uh, as well as Jared, the other uh, uh, tutor who is uh, involved with uh, teaching you or, or helping you with uh, MCS. So make you use of these uh, opportunities to get in touch with us on a weekly basis so that you can easily keep track of your performance, um, um, which will be immensely beneficial for you at your real exam. So the most important webinar out of the four webinars, the most important one, um, which is answering and time management technique is happening next Saturday, uh, 13 January at the same time, 5 p.m. UK. Um, it's uh, a must that you uh, attend this webinar because uh, in it, I will explain to you answering techniques or answer planning techniques because you need to, uh, you know, spend some time to develop answer plans or plan out your answer without, uh, you know, straight away uh, trying to type out the answer. So I will provide uh, a certain methodology which you need to adhere to. And uh, as part of the same methodology, I will also highlight a time management uh, uh, technique. Uh, because most students uh, who end up failing the MCS exam, uh, they run out of time because they are clueless about how to manage time. So if you manage your time appropriately, uh, you'd never uh, you know, uh, develop half-hearted answers or incomplete answers because at the exam, 
since you are playing the role of a finance manager, if you come up with incomplete answers or half-hearted answers, then there's absolutely no way that you'd uh, pass the MCS exam. So all these things will be covered in uh, the upcoming webinar. And in the fourth webinar exam prep, I will uh, talk about uh, what you need to do to develop a positive attitude or a high level of confidence because as per the CMA examiner, confident students uh, end up uh, passing the MCS exam comfortably. And on top of that, I will also um, you know, draw your attention towards uh, examiner's comments. We need to understand what's in the mind of the examiner, what the examiner expects from you. So all these things will be covered in the fourth uh, webinar. And in the Q&A sessions, I will be focusing on, uh, uh, rather Jared, my co-tutor, will be uh, focusing on uh, uh, different syllabus content and based on it, uh, explain the type of answers you are supposed to develop, what you need to cover within the answer plans and whatnot. And in the final Q&A, um, which happens two or three days before your exam, um, Jared will highlight uh, what you need to do to maintain a high level of confidence closer to the exam, as well as uh, he will provide you with last minute tips as well. So please make uh, use of these, uh, you know, free um, um, services which we offer. And on top of that, uh, if you miss out on any of the webinars, there's absolutely nothing for you to worry because we are recording all these uh, uh, webinars. So the recorded versions can be accessed, ac accessed via our website as well as via our YouTube channel. Okay, so uh, having said that, let's uh, get into the nitty gritty. So please in application, what is the right approach? So first things first, you need to know your key information such as, uh, you know, Kapka sells new and used cars, not just, they are not involved with just selling new and used cars, they are providing related uh, services as well as selling related products as well. You'd get to know what these things are later on when I conduct the pre-scene analysis uh, session. And on top of that, um, in order to ensure that your life becomes easy, uh, in order to ensure that you remember the most important points highlighted within the pre-scene, we have developed a set of TikTok videos. So within six minutes, six to seven minutes, you can cover the entire pre-scene and constantly, if you keep watching these uh, three TikTok videos on a you know daily basis, you'd constantly keep reminding yourself about the most important points highlighted within the pre-scene. So you need not study anything. Just keep watching these three TikTok videos. So, you know, um, um, that's one of the things which you can do. We are providing this service free of charge. And on top of that, if you refer to our annotated pre-scene and if you watch the four pre-scene analysis videos, you would have an in-depth understanding about the internal and external dynamics of Kapka as well as its financial performance um, uh, and you know, the financial performance of its closest competitor. And uh, with regards to ratios, you need to remember the key ratios uh, because... Um, uh, you know, at the exam, rather than trying to calculate different types of ratios and try to try to uh, do a horizontal analysis on your own, it's better to simply refer to the financial analysis slides which we have developed at TCS and uh, try to understand what we have highlighted because our e evaluations, we have kept it simple uh, and concise so that you can easily understand and grasp uh, uh, information about the financial performance of the company. So you need to be conversant about what appears within the financial statements as well. Again, as I mentioned, we have uh, developed a set of financial analysis slides. Uh, so it makes your life extremely easy when it comes to remembering the key ratios. And you are supposed to prepare for possible scenarios, but be open-minded. So you, you can predict the type of scenarios or the questions which will be thrown at you uh, at the exam based on the information presented in the pre-scene document because uh, the examiner usually uh, provides certain hints about the type of uh, scenarios which can be tested at the exam. So based on these things, we have developed our you know mock exams, the five mock exams. Although that is the case, you have to be open-minded because mind you, the uh, CMA examin is trying to replicate a real life corporate environment and you are playing the role of an FM or a finance manager within this company. So as a finance manager, just imagine, uh, just think that you are working within this company for real. And if that is the case, you walk into office, you open up your email. And when you do, you cannot predict before opening the email, you cannot predict 
the type of threats the company is facing and the type of opportunities the company is trying to exploit. So it's better to be open-minded because uh, that's what you are supposed to uh, have or practice as in order to become a successful finance manager. So prepare for possible scenarios, but be open-minded and remember that the scenario presented in the exam carries the latest information. So what is highlighted within each and every question presents you with fresh information about something the company is facing right now. So once you go through the pre-seen document, it gives you an indication about what the company has faced in the past, what had happened within the industry in the past, what the company uh, is involved with, well, what, what the company was involved with in the past, uh, the internal dynamics of the company, as well as uh, it gives us an indication about the past financial performance because uh, uh, the financial statements such as the SOPL, SOFP, and uh, the statement of changes, uh, changes in equity will be thrown at you. Although this is the case, just because you are uh, truly conversant with uh, the information which appears within the pre-seen, you cannot pass the examination because, as I mentioned earlier, the type of uh, uh, the, the the type of information which appears within each of your question highlights the present situation faced by the company. So that's why I said you need to be open-minded. Uh, there's absolutely no point of trying to you know you know box your mindset and think that okay I've done the mock exams I've gone through the pre-seen so because of that there are some, you know I know everything what's going to be tested at the exam that's not the correct approach because there is a professional qualification the examiner is trying to figure out whether you have uh, uh, gained an appropriate level of theoretical knowledge and on top of that the examiner tries to figure out whether you have the capability to apply this knowledge when developing solutions for your company okay so that's what you need to focus on with regards to pre-seen application. And when referring to pre-seen information in your answers, these are the things which you need to uh, be uh, aware of. You are supposed to refer or cite in such a way that it adds value to your answer. So simply by bringing in irrelevant information from the pre-seen, you cannot gain marks. Just because you bring in some point from the pre-seen, you won't get marks. Instead, the approach should be to identify or understand how pre-seen information which you are bringing in from the pre-seen adds value to the evaluations which you are providing, adds value to the recommendations which you are providing. So you can understand how you are supposed to do this by attending the upcoming webinar, the third webinar uh, where I will, I've done a blunder here. It's not exam technique, rather it's answering technique. So uh, in the third webinar, whilst explaining you answering technique, I'd also take you through uh, uh, the uh, question and answer based on uh, the mini mock, which we have uh, uploaded onto our website. And once I do it, you'd understand how you are supposed to bring in pre-seen information with the intention of improving the quality of your answer. Okay, so there's absolutely no point of trying to force it in to the marker and show that we have studied the pre-seen uh, by bringing in irrelevant information instead you have to, if you're bringing in information from the pre-seen, it needs to be totally relevant to the company, its internal dynamics, its external dynamics. It needs to make financial sense. And on top of that, uh, you have to consider the new and present information provided uh, as part of each and every scenario. Okay, so you can also learn how this is done by referring to the suggested dance and the answer plans of the five mock exams which we have developed. And on top of that, if you uh, you know watch the 20 master classes, again, uh, you draw again an in-depth understanding about how uh, this can be achieved. Okay. All right. So that's about the pre-scene. Then um, you have to be conversant about the syllabus content because as I told you earlier, this uh, case study examination is developed with the intention of ensuring or, or with the intention of testing whether you have an enough, uh, you know, uh, an appropriate level of understanding about theor theoretical content. And on top of that, to figure out whether you are capable of utilizing your theoretical knowledge and applying it to a real business context. So you need to know your theory and always bear in mind, just because you know your theory, you cannot pass the exam. You need to focus on your application skills, especially given the fact that you are playing the role of finance manager. 
you are involved with decision making, you are reporting to board members. So in such an environment, you need to be conversant with theory as well as you need to work on your application skills. So prepare for application of theories and concepts at your exam and prepare for interpretation of figures and numbers because mind you, you are not supposed to uh, do any sums or uh, work out any calculations at the examination. Instead, the numbers or the facts and figures will be provided uh, uh, as, uh, as part of each and every scenario. Your role is to interpret the figures and numbers. And when, uh, when it comes to preparing, uh, uh, with uh, theoretical content, do not skip any topic. I've seen so many, you know, tutors out there saying certain elements will not be tested, certain syllabus co content will not be tested. You know, I won't say the same thing because the CMA examiner specifically says that any syllabus area can be tested. And if you, you know, check out our mock exams, you'd see the same thing. The entire syllabus is covered. We have not left out any component with the intention of ensuring that you are fully geared for success at your MCS exam. So you're not supposed to skip any topic and do not rely on predictions as any area can be examined. So that's exactly what I told you um, right now. Uh, don't be narrow-minded. Instead, it's better to be open-minded if that is the case. You'd do your job in a successful manner. All right, so before we move on to the uh, uh, pre scene analysis as well as the industry analysis, let me quickly tell you what we offer at TCS. So um, if you are yet to check the free content, click on this button and you know create your user account, then you'd gain access to uh, the recorded versions of all webinars uh, which we are conducting. And on top of that, you'd also gain access to a mini mock, its suggested answer and the answer plan. And uh, if you are interested in purchasing before you do so, check out our sample material to figure out, uh, to gain an understanding about the type of uh, material you are getting access to under each uh, product category. And if you are yet to be part and parcel of our MCS WhatsApp group, you can uh, simply click on this button and join it uh, then and there. Okay, then talking about the different types of packages which we offer, we offer two main packages, the value pack and the premium package. The value pack is designed for students who have completed the uh, SEMA OTQ exams. So if you are coming through the SEMA general route and if you had done your OTQs, then that indicates, uh, then it indicates that you have uh, an appropriate level of knowledge when it comes to syllabus content E2, P2 and F2. So in such an environment, uh, you know, your life becomes easy, especially given the fact that you know your theory. So if you are such a student, simply opt for the value pack. And under the value pack, you'd gain access to recordings of all webinars. Uh, you'd gain access to five mock exams with suggested answers because it's of utmost importance that you attempt uh, mock exams, uh, which are exam standard and pre-scene specific. And uh, you'd also gain access to the uh, pre-scene analysis videos, full pre-scene analysis videos. And uh, in a short while, you'd understand uh, what uh, these uh, pre-scene analysis videos comprise of. And you'd also gain access to the annotated pre-scene. Again, you'd see what the annotated pre-scene looks like uh, in a little while. It makes your life easy when it comes to understanding uh, uh, the pre-scene and identifying the most important uh, points uh, highlighted within the pre-scene document. And you'd also gain access to industry and financial analysis cards again you'd see what our industrial analysis cards look like uh, in a short while. And let me quickly show you, you know, the financial analysis slides, uh, which we have developed for a previous uh, case study. So as I told you earlier, at the very end of uh, the pre-scene document, the examiner provides you with uh, financial information uh, of your company, Kapka, as well as its closest competitor. So based on these financial uh, statements, you are supposed to conduct your uh, own evaluation. Uh, rather than asking you to do your own evaluation, we have made your life easy by, uh, you know, coming up with evaluations. We have kept things uh, simple uh, so that you can easily understand uh, about the financial performance or what uh, appears within each and every financial statement. So the same could be said about the statement of financial position because a similar uh, 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 type of evaluation had been carried out. And uh, at the very end, a ratio analysis is conducted and each ratio, uh, a, a comparison between each ratio uh, had been carried out so that you understand where your company stands 
relative to its closest competitor. So that's exactly what you can see throughout uh, this document. So, you know, you'd gain access to these type of financial analysis slides uh, under the value pack, and you'd also gain access to top 10 likely issues, which highlights the most, uh, you know, uh, probable areas which can be tested at your uh, real exam. And you'd also gain access to a case study familiarization kit so that you uh, can, within 10, 10 to 15 minutes, you can easily understand the technicalities behind the MCS exam. And you'd also gain access to a tutor managed live chat so that you can always uh, get in touch with us, myself and Jared. And, uh, you know, if there are any questions or concerns, you can raise them and, you know, find solutions. And also you'd uh, gain access to the OTQ revision cards, because as I told you earlier, if you're coming through the uh, SEMA general route, you would have done your OTQs. However, it's better to brush up your knowledge, um, you know, closer to the examination. So you can easily, um, uh, you know, brush up your knowledge in these areas by referring to our OTQ revision cards. And the value pack is priced at 199 pounds. And looking at the premium package, uh, this is specifically designed for students who are coming uh, through the uh, uh, exemption routes, such as the uh, master's gateway or the FLP route. And if you had failed your exam previously, you need some type of uh, additional help. So that's exactly what uh, is uh, covered under the premium package. So if you opt for the premium package, uh, you'd gain access to all uh, you know, uh, type of resources, study resources, uh, which are covered under the value pack. Additionally, you'd gain access to the online mock exam platform. So we have developed uh, a mock exam platform, which is akin to the Pearson VUE system, uh, which you'd uh, use at your real exam. So uh, as I told you earlier in the in the upcoming webinar, the third webinar, I will be highlighting and answering and time management technique. Just because you know these techniques, you cannot get it right because you need to practice, keep on practicing these techniques to in order to champion them and uh, in order to uh, comfortably implement them at the real exam. So the best approach to do this is to keep practicing these techniques every time you attempt a mock via our exam platform. And on top of that, if you attempt mocks via the exam platform, um, you'd, uh, you know, um, be conversant about exam stress as well as the type of issues you'd uh, encounter when, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, providing answers. So it's better to encounter all these issues way before the exam rather than at your real exam. So you have access to the online mock exam platform and also you'd gain access to one-on-one -on -one tutor feedback on mocks three, four, and five. So out of the five mocks, the first two mocks are there to ensure, to make sure that you uh, uh, get your bearings with the answering and time management techniques. So in the up, in the upcoming webinar, I, I'm going to ask you guys to allocate something like 15 to 20 minutes to develop something called an answer plan. So although I'm asking you to do it, when you try to do it for the first time, you take 45 minutes. I'm asking you to allocate 20 minutes to develop the answer plan, but you take 45 minutes. Why? Because you are doing it for the first time. So that's why we are not providing tutor feedback for mocks one and two to ensure or, or to give you space so that uh, uh, you, you champion the answering as well as time management techniques. And from mock three onwards, you'd receive tutor feedback. So let me quickly show you the type of feedback you'd receive uh, at TCS. So as you can see on a paragraph by paragraph basis, uh, we have provided you with feedback there by highlighting what's uh, wrong and how you can improve uh, uh, the quality of your answers. And uh, that's exactly what you can see throughout this answer script. And overall comments have also been provided to ensure that you really understand what your shortcomings are. And at the very end, mark breakdowns are provided and uh, on a subtask by subtask basis, and additionally, we have, uh, you know, uh, highlighted uh, a success rate as well. So by looking at the success rate, you can easily understand the subtasks in which your performance is not up to standard. So focused on these areas, the yellow highlighted areas, after receiving tutor feedback, you are supposed to redevelop answer plans on your own. Um, so that you significantly improve the quality of your answer plans. So these, this is the, the best type of revision which you can be involved with. And all these things are based on the mock exams and the tutor feedback you'd receive uh, 
uh, if you opt for our resources. All right. And at the very end, uh, the total mark uh, is highlighted so that you can understand, you know, how, uh, you know, effective your answers were and always focus on improving the quality of your answers. Okay. So uh, these are the type of uh, feed feedback you'd receive. And on top of that, you'd uh, gain access to answer plans of all five mock exams. So rather than going through pages and pages of suggested answers and trying to develop your own short notes or mind maps based on the suggested answers, we have gone a step further. We have developed them for you so that you do not waste time or you uh, to ensure that you do not do a haphazard job when uh, developing your own answer plans or mind maps. So let me quickly show you what these uh, mind maps look like. So rather than going through the suggested answer and trying to figure out uh, the structure of the answer, what's highlighted, uh, the logic behind the answer, as well as trying to figure out how theoretical elements have been brought in and applied, how present information had been brought in, all these things can easily be understood by looking at these answer plans. So in other words, these are answer summaries which we are providing to you so that it makes your life easy after receiving tutor feedback, after understanding the subtasks in which your success rate was low, I asked you to redevelop answer plans on your own. You know what I'm talking about uh, or how you are supposed to uh, you know, do this after attending next week's webinar. And after redeveloping your answer plans, you simply need to compare your fresh answer plan with the answer plans which we are providing uh, so that you can easily understand uh, which elements are missing and which elements you need to focus on uh, with the intention of significantly improving the quality of your answer. And on top of that, you'd also gain access to 20 masterclasses. Uh, and via these masterclasses, we are explaining the logic of each and every answer. And on top of that, whilst explaining the logic, we are teaching you theory as well as teaching you application skills. So if you are coming through FLP, most students lack uh, a strong uh, understanding about F2 and P2 syllabus content. And on top of that, if you had failed in your previous sitting, then it indicates that there's something wrong with uh, theoretical knowledge or your application skills. So rather than wasting time by going back to your study notes and whatnot, the best way to learn theory as well as improve application skills are by watching these masterclasses. And this package comes with pass guarantee. However, uh, so this pass guarantee entails that uh, uh, if you end up investing on the premium package, yet you end up failing, you would gain access to the premium package in your subsequent sitting free of charge. However, in order to claim the pass guarantee, you have to complete these three tasks. You have to complete all five mock exams. Without doing it, you cannot cover the entire syllabus. You won't be fully prepared and your solutions need to be original. There's absolutely no point of going through the suggested answers before you uh, attempt each mock exam, because if you do, you are cheating yourself. Rather than doing that, it's better to do it fresh, do it on your own, give your best shot and really understand where you stand as a student. And you have to meet the performance criteria as well. So for mocks three, four and five, you have to gain more than 40%. Why have we uh, you know, come up with such a guideline to ensure that you give your best shot uh, when attempting mocks three, four and five? Why do we want you to give your best shot? Because you are receiving tutor feedback. So we spend something like two hours per answer script when providing a tutor feedback. So, you know, there's absolutely no point of us putting in so much of effort if you, you are not doing uh, your job properly or if, if you are not, um, you know, putting your best effort. So in order to ensure that you are extremely serious about what you do, we have come up with this performance criteria. And mark my word, after completing these three tasks, there's absolutely no way that you'd fail the MCS exam. So even after doing these three things, if you're unlucky, uh, if you end up failing, you'd gain access to the premium package once more in your subsequent sitting free of charge. And the premium package come, uh, uh, comes in two uh, you know, payment plans. You can pay in full and save 100 pounds. So the uh, package is priced at 649 or else if you can opt for an installment payment option as well. Uh, if that is the case, the price uh, comes up to 749 pounds. 
and uh, you can pay in two installments of uh, 374 pounds each uh, on uh, 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 which is spread across two months okay and i want you to check out uh, the study plan as well i explained the study plan in the uh, uh, first webinar so keep track of uh, your performance uh, keep track of what you're supposed to do by um, checking checking out uh, the uh, you know uh, um, uh, the study plan which we have uh, developed within the website itself okay so that's what we offer at tcs and uh, having said that Let's move on to the pre-scene analysis. So before I do that, I've uh, received some questions. Uh, uh, I will address them before moving forward. So let me pause. All right, seems like there aren't uh, any questions. So I'm moving on to the pre-scene analysis. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, first things first, I'll uh, take you through uh, the industry analysis uh, uh, partially, then move on to uh, the pre-scene analysis. So uh, I'm going to conduct the industry analysis based on the industry analysis slides, uh, which we have developed for the uh, uh, Feb 2024 sitting. So this uh, comprises of four main parts. Uh, first things first, I will be providing an industry overview so that you understand what these in what this industry is about, its uh, technicalities behind this industry. Then I will also uh, highlight industry trends uh, so that you understand the type of scenarios which can be thrown at you at the real exam. Because, you know, uh, time and time again, based on the industry trends um, which affect each and every industry, uh, you would see scenarios thrown at you at your real exam. So I'd, you know, talk about certain industry trends. Then uh, we have also mentioned about industry challenges, uh, uh, which highlights the type of uh, uh, threats uh, which uh, um, which which can be seen within the industry. I'm not going to talk about the challenges uh, tonight because it, it would take a lot of time. But if you uh, stay if if you go through this set of slides, then you'd easily understand the type of challenges uh, the industry faces. And at the very end, uh, a real world example had been provided with the intention of ensuring uh, that you gain an in depth understanding about how real life companies operate within this chosen industry. All right, so uh, first things first, I'm gonna focus on uh, the market definition. You need to know what this market is about. So this time's pre-scene is based on uh, car dealerships, okay? So a uh, car dealership is a retail business that sells new and or used cars. So what you need to understand is most car dealerships, car dealerships out there, they sell used as well as new cars via their dealerships. However, there could be a set of car dealerships which are predominantly focusing on selling new cars only. So there are two different types of car dealerships. And if you look at cup cars, internal dynamics, they are involved with selling uh, new as well as used cars. And they serve as intermediaries between manufacturers and consumers. So um, you know, a car, de car dealership is involved with B2B relationships as well as B2C relationships. B2B is uh, a situation where, um, you know, they are aligned with uh, the needs of car manufacturers because the car manufacturers do not sell their cars on their own. Instead, they try to push sales via a retail outlet. So these retailers are the car dealerships. And uh, uh, these type of car dealerships are involved with B2C relationships as well because they are pushing their car to the end customer. They also offer after-sales services such as servicing, repairs, and upgrades. So if a customer wants an upgrade, car dealerships usually provide it. And on top of that, they do routine services as well as repairs. And for all these things, uh, they will charge the price from the customer. So these are additional revenue generating opportunities at uh, the disposal of car dealerships. And they may also assist the customers to obtain personal loans or lease leases for their cars. So these are, again, additional revenue generating opportunities at uh, the behest of uh, a car dealership. And um, most car dealerships run under a franchise model. So you know what a franchise model is. So, you know, this is a situation where uh, a car manufacturer sells the car to the dealer and the dealer sells to the customers. And we have to design or maintain the quality of the dealership in accordance to uh, the requirements of the franchisor. So we will be the franchisee. So we have to listen to what the franchisor tells us. 
and uh, adhere to the guidelines or the quality standards expected uh, from us. Franchises are awarded to dealerships that can fulfill a certain criteria, especially with regards to quality and the uh, type of services offered at each car dealership. A franchise dealership showroom is allowed to sell only that manufacturer's new cars. So that's typical because uh, when you go for a franchising model, uh, you'd be utilizing um, the branding as well as the imagery of uh, the franchiser. So in such an environment, uh, you cannot sell some other uh, manufacturer's cars within uh, your uh, car dealership. However, the dealership is free to sell any used cars in the showroom. So when it comes to selling new cars, if you go for a franchise uh, agreement, you can only sell uh, uh, a certain brand of new cars. However, uh, when it comes to uh, selling used cars, you can sell anything, even if you opt for a franchising agreement. Okay, and uh, different type of facilities are provided within a dealership. So there's a showroom, uh, uh, which uh, is uh, typical because uh, a showroom uh, should be designed so that uh, uh, you know uh, we can display cars and ensure that uh, we uh, try we are capable of attracting customers uh, so that we can drive our sales and there's a car lot as well that's an outside space where usually used cars are uh, you know kept so that um, if an individual customer wants to purchase a used car they can go to the car lot and uh, you know check out the cars and purchase uh, whichever car they like and uh, usually uh, a car dealership comes with a workshop because as I told you earlier, routine servicing, uh, repairs, as well as maintenance work are carried out. So each car dealership nowadays uh, should have a workshop as well. I'm not going to talk about fleet leasing services because it's going to take a bit of uh, our time. So you can you know refer to these points on your own. Uh, then I'm going to focus on the industry trends. So there's a lot of uh, digitalization within this industry because... Uh, AI and data analytics have been utilized. You'd see the same information within your pricing document as well. AI and data analytics are used to uh, understand needs of customers. And because if you understand the exact needs of customers, you are in a position to uh, recommend cars as well as upgrades and whatnot as and when necessary. And on top of that, similar information can be shared with the car manufacturer to ensure that car manufacturers themselves end up uh, manufacturing cars which are closely aligned with the needs of customers. So there's a lot of digitalization and um, there's a rise in e-commerce and online sales. Uh, so in the good olden days, if you wanted to purchase a car, you had to go uh, visit a physical location, a physical car dealership, but that's not the case anymore. Um, there are websites uh, which are run by the car dealerships themselves so that uh, any individual can purchase a car online and in most of the uh, occasions, uh, customers gain product information via the websites before walking into a car dealership, checking out the car and purchasing it. And there are remote diagnostic services uh, uh, provided via technologies such as uh, telematics. Uh, so telematics technology is something like a GPS tracker, but not just a GPS tracker. Um, it's actually uh, much more advanced than that. So this... Uh, this type of uh, telematics technology keeps track of the performance of your car. Uh, it will tell you when you are supposed to replace your uh, replace certain parts, uh, when you are supposed to maintain your vehicle. Uh, the uh, you know most prudent way of uh, utilizing your vehicle, um, how to reduce your fuel costs and whatnot. All these things uh, will be provided via advanced telematics technology. And on top of that, uh, there are subs subscription-based vehicle maintenance as well, uh, where you go for an annual subscription and based on it, uh, you can um, you know, um, replace parts as and when necessary, conduct servicing and whatnot. Okay, so these are the different types of trends which we can see within the industry and based on it, you would see uh, uh, similar scenarios at your real exam. So I'm not going to focus on the other elements, as I mentioned earlier. I'm simply focusing on the most important points uh, so, so that you'd understand what happens within this industry. All right, then moving on to the pre document. document. Uh, let's see uh, the internal dynamics of Kapka. So Kapka was founded in 1964. So the company had been in existence for the past 60 years, which is a significant strength because when that is the case, uh, customers will trust us. Uh, usually, when a company had been in operation for the past 60 years, it has uh, an extremely uh, positive uh, reputation. 
which leads to customer trust and customer loyalty. So in such an environment, uh, uh, Kapka is in a position to easily drive sales as and when necessary, mainly given the fact that customers trust us. And uh, the company was quoted on the Wellandian Stock Exchange in 1998. So this uh, uh, fictitious company is based in uh, Welland. And we are quoted in the Wellandian Stock Exchange since 1998. So uh, for the past 25 years, uh, we have been uh, you know, uh, listed in the stock exchange, which further improves our reputation. And this can be considered as another strength of the company. Uh, there are now 214 new car dealerships uh, under the Kapka brand spread across uh, across Wayland, and we are employing 25,000 staff members. So there's a significant number of employees. Uh, so in such an environment, it's uh, highly likely that HR would be faced with HR issues. So your knowledge pertaining to uh, you know areas such as uh, conflict resolution, how to conduct negotiations, as well as how to provide leadership and uh, how to uh, you know motivate the employees uh, how, you know what type of uh, strategies we can adopt to ensure that uh, the employees give the uh, highest level of service to customers as well as ensuring that uh, we keep them motivated all these things which are covered under the e2 syllabus will be definitely tested at your exam uh, kapka is one of the largest uh, new car dealers in welland both in terms of dealership and revenue so you know, again, this is a significant strength of the company. Uh, we have been in existence for the past 60 years. We have been, uh, uh, you know, listed within the stock exchange for the past 25 years. And on top of that, we are one of the largest new car dealerships in Welland, both in terms of dealerships and revenue, uh, which is a significant strength. And the company invests heavily in product training and in sales training for all customer facing staff. So I said, you know, HR related uh, elements will definitely be tested. So this company is uh, hell bent about uh, you know uh, training, providing training, uh, especially sales training for all our customer facing staff, where well, which dem demonstrates that uh, customer service is a top priority for Kapka, not just Kapka, any company within this industry, primarily focuses on driving sales by providing. Uh, adequate customer service. Each of the company's dealership is designed to create a positive impression in the mind of the customer. Each dealership's signage shows both the Kapka Kap Kap logo and the logo of the car manufacturers. Yes, that's uh, normal. The dealerships are large and are designed to attract customers. They are located alongside main roads, often close to motorway junctions, making them convenient for customers. So again, these are strengths which the company is enjoying. And this reiterates that customer service is at the top priority for Kapka. Most of Kapka's customers research the purchase of uh, a new or used car online and then visit their local dealership. So that's exactly what I highlighted when uh, conducting the industry analysis. It is, however, becoming increasingly common for customers to choose and purchase cars online for home delivery. So this indicates, I, I highlighted this point again within uh, as part of the industry analysis. So this indicates that uh, e-commerce uh, is growing. This will lead to increased competition in the market because customers can easily gain uh, access to information when usually when customers have access to uh, information easily, it leads to a greater level of uh, competition within the market. And this will impact the physical retailers the most because when running an online store, as opposed to running your own physical car dealership, it's quite cheap. If you if if you are to run your uh, physical car dealership, uh, you, you need to pay exorbitant rents. You have to maintain it. You have to have uh, you know well trained uh, you know sales executives working within it. Uh, you need to hire management staff and whatnot. So all these things can be avoided if you go for a one hundred percent online based uh, scenario. So that's uh, what I've uh, highlighted in here. So given the fact that there's a growth in e commerce. Uh, your E2 related knowledge pertinent to digital business models will definitely be tested at your real exam. The dealership principal is in charge of each dealership uh, and uh, this um, principal is granted a significant amount of discretion over operational matters such as including pricing of new and used cars. So the dealership principal or uh, this is someone like a general manager which runs the show within each and every dealership. So the de dealership principal 
um, carries a significant amount of discretion over operational matters. So this individual has um, an uh, uh, increased level of autonomy with regards to how each dealership is run. So this includes pricing of new and used cars. So they are in a position to offer discounts as and when necessary with the intention of driving sales, uh, recognizing that each brand of uh, car may require a different sales approach and that regional differences can affect the approach taken to sales. Yes, uh, based on the geographical regions, the tastes of customers will differ. Um, so in urban areas, customers would uh, opt for sporty cars, whereas uh, if you look at uh, rural settings, they'd go for, uh, you know, uh, you know, vehicles such as uh, cabs or, uh, you know, particularly big vehicles so that they can use it for industrial purposes. So likewise, um, based on uh, the differing tastes within each geographical region, you need to adopt different sales approaches and, you know, designing these sales approaches is uh, the responsibility of the dealership principal. So while this can improve regional sales, when you try to you know, target your customers in a different manner in accordance to the needs of uh, the customers within your chosen segment, while this uh, improves regional sales, if there are significant price differences across Kapka's dealerships, it can confuse customers because the same vehicle within two different regions could have two different prices. So if that is the case, uh, you know, customers... Uh, might be confused about the price uh, each dealership is charging them. All right, so um, Kapka is, as I mentioned earlier, Kapka is into selling new cars as well as used cars, and they are selling different types of brands. So, you know, Kapka has a varying, varying number of uh, dealerships for each popular brand. For example, it has uh, 17 dealerships selling, uh, you know, vehicles which uh, uh, are manufactured by Barter Motors, as well as they uh, are selling, uh, you know, luxury cars, which are manufactured by Lumalux and whatnot. And Bata Motors is one of Wellen's most popular brands. And Kapka is keen to have as many dealerships selling its cars as possible. Why? Because if Bata Motors cars are in uh, huge demand, then it's prudent for us to sell Bata Mo Motor, uh, you know, cars as much as possible. So based on this information, uh, we have, uh, you know, mentioned that uh, this could be a possible exam scenario where you might have to evaluate the addition of a new dealership for Barter Motors. So at the moment, we are dealing with uh, 17, uh, you know, uh, Barter Motor branded uh, uh, dealerships. And at your exam, the board members might be evaluating a situation where we add um, or, or, or we go for an additional uh, dealership with Barter Motors. If that is the case, um, your knowledge with regards to handling business risks will be tested because when you are expanding your dealership, you are exposed to certain risks and uh, your knowledge pertaining to these areas will be tested, which are covered under the P2 syllabus. And your knowledge pertaining to investment appraisal because when evaluating this uh, type of an investment, you have to appraise that investment. So, you know, NPV, IRR and all that will be tested. And sources of financing, whether we need to go for debt or equity, and in each option, what type of debt or equity uh, should we adhere to? You'd have to evaluate bit between uh, different uh, financing sources, uh, thereby uh, uh, applying your knowledge pertaining to uh, F2 related syllabus content, and your knowledge pertaining to project management will be tested as well as uh, the HR aspects of uh, going for an additional dealership, which uh, uh, your, all these elements which are covered in the E2 syllabus will also be tested. And all these areas are covered within the mock exams, which we have developed. So you have nothing to worry about. If you attempt the mock exams, watch the master classes, then you'd gain an in-depth understanding about the theoretical elements, as well as significantly improve your application skills. All right, so uh, Kapka is in competition with other dealers for new car sales. So that's uh, uh, quite basic. Customers are generally willing to drive to a more distant dealership that can offer their choice of car at a good price. So that's exactly what I mentioned previously. Uh, the same car within two different car dealerships might be differently priced. So because of that, knowing that customers, uh, especially given the fact that you can gain access to uh, information via uh, uh, you know, the website, 
customers um, usually drive long distances to find their car, which is at uh, the cheapest price. Okay, and uh, uh, Cupcast dealership uh, principals uh, pay close attention to the activities of rival dealerships. And when it comes to rival dealerships, we are not only talking about uh, other car dealerships, we are also talking about dealerships which are run by Cupcar itself. So I, as I told you earlier, this dealership principal runs the show within each and every dealership. It's uh, This is someone akin to a general manager. So you might be uh, competing with another Kapka branded dealership and the activities of other Kapka dealerships in their general vicinity. All these things are kept track of the direct competitors as well as, uh, you know, our own dealerships. All this information is kept track of by the dealership principal with the intention of ensuring that, uh, uh, you know, we know the prices charged by other car dealerships, the type of, uh, you know, car stocks held by them, the type of services they offer and whatnot. Uh, so all this information is necessary when trying to drive sales as much as possible. So it appears that there is a high level of competition among car dealers in Welland based on this information. All right. So when it comes to maximizing sales, uh, Kapka focuses on different elements. I'm not going to focus too much on these areas because uh, these are quite straightforward. If you uh, refer to the annotated precinct, you'd understand what's uh, uh, highlighted within uh, each and every paragraph. So uh, Kapka focuses on uh, how it presents itself uh, in the eyes of customers. So there are re receptionists uh, as well as sales executives within each uh, car dealership and uh, you know, we try to constantly keep track with uh, customer needs via telephone as well as uh, emails and sales executives are smartly dressed uh, and we are offering promotions as much as possible with the intention of uh, uh, driving sales by serving customers as much as possible. And we are focused on customer care as well. I highlighted this point earlier. That's exactly why we are focused on, uh, uh, you know, significant uh, offering significant training opportunities to our staff members. And um, when it comes to pricing, as I told you earlier, with the intention of uh, selling, uh, uh, you know, pushing sales as much as possible, uh, we offer discounts and uh, the margins pertinent to selling uh, new cars is extremely low relative to selling a used car. So this information is highlighted within the precinct. So if you go through our precinct analysis videos in full, and uh, refer to the annotated precinct, you'd understand what I'm talking about. So what you need to uh, remember is significant discounts are offered to customers with the intention of uh, driving sales. Because if you drive sales, uh, each car dealership will receive uh, commissions from car manufacturers. So car manufacturers set performance targets. And if you achieve the sales target, you receive a comm commission. So because of this commission or, or, or focusing on this bonus rather, focusing on this bonus, uh, car dealerships um, usually try to sell new cars even at a loss because even if you sell a new car at a loss that's totally fine because anyways the margins are low rather than focusing on uh, or relying on margins it's prudent to rely on the performance uh, bonus paid by each car manufacturer and uh, you know um, Kapka uh, competes on inventory availability as well uh, we try to make sure that uh, we have uh, enough stocks of cars and if in a, in, 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 in a certain dealership, we have run out of a certain model, you know, uh, the dealership principal can get in touch with another car, car, car dealership and uh, ensure that uh, you purchase the car from a different uh, car dealership so that, uh, you know, the, the, you know, vehicle is available to customers. And uh, they are investing on data analytics as well. As I mentioned earlier in the industry analysis, you need to be, it's better to invest on data analytics so that uh, you really understand uh, uh, the needs of customers. So your knowledge pertinent to disruptive technologies, uh, which uh, is covered under the E2 syllabus will be tested. And uh, Kapka also provides fleet leasing uh, services as well. So there are, when dealing with uh, B2B customers, um, they might purchase uh, five or more vehicles with the intention of, uh, uh, you know, uh, fulfilling their, you know, um, uh, transportation related needs. So in such an environment, we are providing fleet leasing um, uh, services as well. I'm not going to 
go in depth. Instead, uh, I invite you guys to watch all four uh, uh, pre scene analysis videos where I've covered all the elements which are highlighted within the pre scene. And as I mentioned earlier, Kafka is uh, involved with uh, selling used cars as well. So again, when selling used cars, we are focusing on how we present ourselves uh, to customers. We are focusing on quality. Although we are selling used cars, we ensure that uh, these uh, used cars are, uh, you know, maintained appropriately or the you know problems within these uh, used cars are fixed so that uh, customers are not disappointed. And on top of that, we are you know focusing on how we uh, position ourselves so that uh, so thereby focusing primarily on targeting uh, strategies. And we are also uh, providing after sales services, especially given the fact that we are selling a used car. Uh, you know, uh, customers will ask for routine maintenance. Um, um, so in such an environment, it's prudent to provide after sales services. And on top of that, we uh, sell used cars uh, via online, uh, via our website or online platforms as well. Okay, so having said that, I'm just going to skip uh, uh, through all these areas. I just want to focus on, focus your uh, attention towards the board structure of the company as well as uh, move on to um, the business model adopted by the company. I cannot focus on all uh, uh, these elements pertaining to the internal dynamics given the time constraint. So uh, the company is headed by a CEO and under the CEO, you get four different directors. Uh, there's a COO, a marketing director, IT director, as well as a finance director. Although this is the case, all this is good, Although this is the case, uh, you know, it's better to have a dedicated HR director, given the fact that we are dealing with 25,000 uh, employees. So I've mentioned the fact that there is no dedicated director for HR, considering the fact that Kapka employs over 25,000 staff across uh, its dealerships in the country. An argument can be made that a dedicated director for HR can give can be pivotal in managing and developing the human resources of Kapka, especially given the fact that uh, you know, our sales are dependent on the type of services our employees offer to customers. So in such an environment, since we are hell bent on, you know, significantly uh, training our employees, it's better to have a separate uh, HR department or have strategic leadership in this area. And looking at the uh, board composition, uh, the current board comprises of uh, 10 directors, five executive directors and five non-executive directors. So we are complying with... Uh, corporate governance uh, requirement uh, pertaining to board balance because as per uh, corporate governance uh, uh, you know requirements it's prudent to have a good balance between executive and non-executive directors and we have achieved just that which is good for us and on top of that with regards to uh, uh, you know uh, you know uh, board composition your knowledge per pertaining to IAS 24 related party disclosures will definitely be tested. And we have covered this uh, area within one of the mock exams as well. So if you go through that mock and refer to the masterclass, you'd learn what you need to uh, uh, focus on at your real exam. All right, then uh, looking at the business model, uh, Kapka aims to maintain a high volume of sales of new cars and used cars, which enables the company to maximize profits from car sales and from the associated opportunities to provide servicing on customers' cars. So as I mentioned earlier, we are not just, you know, generating sales by selling, um, generating revenue rather, by selling used as well as new cars. There are different uh, or additional revenue generating uh, options at our disposal. So we are focusing on these things. Um, the company had focused on these things when developing the business model. So there is a strong emphasis on sales volumes. So as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we might even sell a new car at a loss with the intention of achieving performance targets set by car manufacturers, because if we do, we'd receive a bonus. So there's a strong emphasis on sales volumes. However, this comes with a risk. Overemphasis on sales volumes can lead to situations where the sales executives fail to understand the exact customer requirements. So rather than understanding the exact customer requirement, we might end up trying to, you know, push cars that does not meet customer needs. So if, if that is the case, even if a customer purchases from us, one fine day, he or she might realize that uh, uh, he or she ended up with a vehicle which is not up to the, the exact requirements uh, of him or her. 
So in such an environment, that would lead to a lower level of loyalty and such uh, a situation also leads to uh, our reputation getting uh, affected in a negative manner. So that's a risk uh, pertaining to, uh, you know, uh, us focusing too much on driving sales. And uh, lastly, focusing on the business model. So as just like what we have learned un under uh, your E2 syllabus, uh, Kapka's uh, business model comprises of four main elements. Number one is defining value. Number two is creating value. Number three is delivering value. And number three is per number four is pertinent to capturing residual value. So let's look at how this uh, company uh, focuses on these four elements. So first things first, when it comes to defining value, you need to know the theoretical element or, or the uh, theoretical logic behind it. Because as I mentioned earlier, as a finance manager, you need to know your theory as well as you need to be conversant with application. So first things first, let's focus on theory. When it comes to defining value, any firm looks at who they create value for. So we need to understand the type of customers we are dealing with in order to uh, determine uh, you know, for whom we are creating value and what counts as value in the eyes of each type of customer. So as I mentioned earlier, we are dealing with two main types of customers. So we are involved with a B2B relationship with car manufacturers. So what are the car manufacturers looking for? Retail services. They are manufacturing cars. They are trying to ensure that uh, they find a retail outlet where their cars can be sold. So this is the exact requirement of the car manufacturers which we need to fulfill. And when it comes to B2C relationships, we are dealing with end customers as well. And the end customers are looking for a positive experience. So we have defined value in the eyes of two different sets of customers we are dealing with. Then moving on to the second element of the business model, which is about creating value. So in this element, any firm tries to understand how its resources are used with the intention of uh, you know creating value in the eyes of the customers so how are we how is this company trying to uh, you know create value uh, by engaging with uh, or carrying out ongoing relationships with customers because if you have ongoing relationships you won't sell a car just once whenever the uh, customer the same customer whenever he or she wants to purchase a new car they come behind us so these ongoing relationships will create value in the eyes of customers and we are providing expert advice uh, from our staff members and it's mentioned within the precinct that our staff members are, are well trained we constantly keep these guys trained and they have uh, an extensive uh, understanding about each type of vehicle we sell within our car dealership so if they are conversant with the type of cars sold within our car dealerships then they are in a position to provide expert advice if that is the case we are creating value for customers and on top of that, uh, we have a reputation which is uh, based on providing excellent after-sales services. So if you're providing excellent after-sales services, it indicates that we are not forgetting the needs of the customer, which leads to value creation. And this type of value leads to customer loyalty in the long run. So that's uh, the second part with regards to creating value. Then just because we plan to create value, it does not make any sense if we stop there. We have to also focus on how we are to deliver value. So in this element, under this element, firms find ways to get value to those it was created for. So how are we, Kapka, uh, you know, uh, involved with delivering value or value delivery? We are assisting customers in every stage of the acquisition and ownership of cars. Yes, we are not just trying to push sales as much as possible. Yes, we are doing it, but we have gone a step further. We are providing after sales services, uh, after sales uh, uh, services. We are providing, um, you know, uh, upgrades. We are facilitating upgrades and whatnot. So, which is good, which uh, ensures that we deliver value. And uh, staff are available for advice and assistance via phone, via email, uh, as well as uh, there are sales executives within uh, each car dealership, uh, which uh, the customers can. Uh, uh, customers have ac access to. So these individuals are involved with uh, the value delivery process and uh, customers have the ability to buy cars and book services through the company website. So we are offering convenience uh, there by delivering value as well. Then the last 
and the four, uh, last element is with regards to capturing residual value. So what's residual value? So this is a, this is a situation where we any company has to spend money to create value. And uh, let's assume we spend $1 million to create value within a certain car dealership. And because of us creating value, we end up generating revenues amounting to something like $1.5 million. So we spent $1 million to uh, create value. And we ended up, because of that, we ended up generating revenues amounting to $1.5 million. So in such an environment, we have created additional revenues relative to how much we spent on creating value. So that's the type of residual value I'm talking about. So, you know, uh, as per the example, which I provided, if we spent uh, $1 million to create value, and if we generated uh, revenues per amount to $1.5 million, the residual value or the additional, you know, revenues which we have generated is $0.5 million. So th this is the value captured when revenue from delivering value exceeds the cost of creating value. And this surplus is shared with stakeholders who contributed to creating value. Because if we do so, our stakeholders who are part and parcel of uh, value creation activities will be overjoyed and they'd want to you know, be part of uh, the company, work for us. Uh, and this leads to uh, increased levels of uh, motivation, leads to increased levels of motivation as well as uh, uh, loyalty within our organization. So how are we uh, capturing residual? How can we capture residual value as a company? We are involved with selling new and used cars, okay? And we are also focused on selling high volumes with the intention of maximizing manufacturers' uh, sales incentives because if we achieve, as I mentioned uh, on multiple occasions, if we achieve the sales targets, we'd receive a bonus. So that's the type of uh, residual value which we can uh, uh, rely on if we focus on selling as much as possible. And uh, um, this creates opportunities to earn commissions. And on top of that, we are also in a position to generate additional revenues by selling workshop services. So, um, and on top of that, with regards to uh, capturing uh, cap capturing additional uh, value, um, it's uh, you know we, we can sell used cars as well because as I mentioned earlier, relative to new cars, selling new cars when we sell used cars, our margins are significantly higher. So by selling more used cars, we can generate significant additional revenues as well. And these excesses can be shared with our shareholders via you know, um, uh, higher dividend payments. If that is the case, the shareholders will be satisfied. Uh, this excess can be shared with our management personnel uh, in terms of uh, providing financial as well as non-financial rewards, which leads to a high level of motivation. And on top of that, these type of excesses can be shared with our employees as well via financial and non-financial in in uh, incentives. Okay, so this is the business model or the way in which the company is run. Uh, so business models are covered under the E2 syllabus. So I've covered the theoretical elements as well as uh, I've highlighted uh, uh, the type of uh, methodologies adopted by the company when it comes to uh, running its business. So, you know, having said that, uh, it brings us to the end of the pre-seen analysis. Uh, I, I wish I had more time uh, to focus on the other elements as well, but uh, uh, you know, since we have to uh, focus on what you need to do to rebound from failure, I'm going to stop there. But uh, if you invest on our paid content, you have access to all four videos. And if you watch these four videos, you can easily understand um, what the company is up to. It's, uh, you know, industry dynamics as well as its financial performance. Any questions before we move on to the last part of uh, tonight's webinar? Any questions? Did you guys understand what I mentioned? Thank you very much, uh, folks, for those uh, questions and uh, kind feedback. So having uh, you know provided uh, answers to each of your queries, I'm moving on to the last part of uh, tonight's webinar, which is about highlighting what you need to do to rebound from failure. Um, so there are a set of... Uh, students who are part and parcel of this uh, um, you know, webinar. 
who would have uh, failed the M MCS exam previously. So if that is the case, you need to change your strategy this time. So I'm going to highlight what you need to get right uh, before attempting your MCS exam in February 2024. So first things first, uh, you need to conduct your own personal reflection and uh, try to understand whether you gave your best shot or not. So in a while, I will uh, talk about shortcomings, um, which leads to failure. So whilst I'm explaining each and every shortcoming, try to you know do your own uh, evaluation and see whether you committed the same mistakes. If that is the case, you need to avoid these mistakes and uh, you know i'll be providing solutions uh, uh, for each and of uh, each and every issue uh, which i will highlight in a while so you need to you know practice these things adhere to these guidelines to ensure that you uh, achieve a pass this time so the best uh, way to um, you know um, understand what went wrong in the uh, previous sitting is to carry out a diagnosis and try to find out the reasons uh, uh, which led to the failure. And each of these, uh, you need to find solutions for each of these uh, uh, failures. And hopefully after uh, I take you through the issues and the solutions, you'd understand what you're supposed to do. And you can easily understand uh, what you need to get right by referring to our mock exams, the suggested answers and answer plans. Because if you refer to the uh, mock exams, suggested answers and answer plans, you'd know the type of answers you are supposed to develop, especially if you uh, refer to the, you know, master classes as well as the answer plans, you'd understand how to structure your answers, what needs to, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, appear within each and every answer. And on top of that, what you need to do with regards to a pre scene application, as well as applying your theoretical knowledge, considering information presented in each and every scenario. So you'd understand these things better after the next webinar, which is uh, which uh, we are conducting um, uh, on next Saturday. And on top of that, uh, by referring to our mock exams, suggested answers, answer plans, and the master classes, you would understand what went wrong in the previous sitting. And you might not have opted for tutor feedback um, uh, on your answer scripts in the previous sitting. Uh, so if you failed previously, in order to really understand what's wrong, it's better to opt for tutor feedback this time. So uh, all these uh, resources come with the premium package. So as I mentioned earlier, the premium package is developed for students uh, who had failed the examination previously. So you would fail because of gaps in theoretical knowledge as well as shortcomings in application. So all these problems are fixed via the mock exams, uh, via the answer plans, as well as uh, the master classes, and especially the tutor feedback. You saw the type of tutor feedback we provide at TCS. Actually speaking, we spent something like two hours uh, when marking your papers, mar marking each of your answer scripts. That's why we are asking for 48 hours uh, to provide you guys with feedback. So we are putting in a lot of effort with the intention of ensuring that you really understand what your shortcomings are because uh, you can avoid these shortcomings only if you understand what's wrong with your answers. So that's what we are solely focusing on. So if you did not opt for tutor feedback last time, it's prudent to focus on it this time. And based on all these things, uh, you have to come up with a better action plan a different action plan, which is to work smarter than the previous attempt. So if you stick to our uh, study plan, as I mentioned earlier, you just need to, you know, uh, you know, allocate seven hours of study, uh, study time per week. So actually your main responsibility is just attempting a mock per week. Everything else is handled by us. So that's the, you know, smartest way to, uh, you know, get things done within a short period of time, especially if I talk about the master classes, uh, you know, uh, you know, that's the best way to learn theory as well as improve application skills rather than, you know, going through you know, your past notes, study packs and whatnot, rather than, you know, wasting time. The best way to learn theory and improve application skills is by watching our master classes. So that's the smartest way to get things done within a short period of time. So simply stick to our study plan and you would have seen the feedback which we have received. Uh, by our students and we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, most of our students uh, who went for the premium package had, go ha had gotten extremely high marks. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a majority of them had gotten more than 100 marks. 
uh, mainly given the fact that uh, they stick to our study plan. So that's the smartest way to uh, get things done. All right, so what are the uh, reasons which leads to a failure? Uh, the main problem is practicing just two or three mock exams. Uh, take it from me, if you practice just two or three mock exams, you are not covering the entire syllabus, so you are taking a risk. So rather than taking a risk, rather than not being conversant about how certain theoretical elements can be tested at your real exam, it's better to attempt all five mock exams. Because as I mentioned earlier, when developing the five mocks, we have made sure to cover all syllabus elements. So if um, so, after attempting the five mocks, there's absolutely no way uh, you'd see a question which you are not conversant about or which you would you, you, you did not see previously when attempting your mock exam. So last time, if you just attempted two or three mock exams, it might be due to you not having enough time. So that's exactly why we have uh, said or asked you to, you not to rather, you uh, we have asked you not to wait until the last two or three weeks uh, uh, leading up to your exam. Start right now, because if you do, you would have enough and more time to attempt all five mock exams, revise all five mock exams. And as I mentioned earlier, if you stick to our study plan, you would be relaxing a week before the exam when all the other students are scrambling for time. So this is a killer. You need to overcome this issue by attempting five mock exams and you have to start right now. And uh, another problem is not practicing mocks under simulated exam conditions. I've seen hordes of students out there. When I ask them, okay, uh, you ended up failing. Why did you fail? They'd say, okay, I attempted, uh, you know, four to five mock exams. But when I, you know, dig deeper, they have not actually um, attempted each mock exam under exam conditions. So most students, what they'd say is, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, looked at each and every mock on a subtask by subtask basis. I could not focus uh, for three, hour three hours at a stretch on a weekly basis. So because of that, Considering each and every subtask, uh, you know, I developed an answer plan. Uh, so there are a set of students, uh, for instance, when attempting a mock exam, since it consists of four different tasks, they'd attempt task number one on Monday, task number two on Tuesday, task number three on Wednesday, and task number four on Thursday and whatnot. But at the real exam, you have to sit in one place and uh, have a go at the entire examination three hours at a stretch. So that's not easy. You need to practice it because uh, when you sit in one place and if you're under constant uh, uh, stress for three hours at a stretch, when you are, you know, uh, sticking to the answering and time management techniques over and over, it's no easy task. You have to get accustomed to it. So uh, in order to get accustomed to all these things, exam stress, answering and time management techniques, in order to champion these techniques uh, uh, and you know ensure a pass at your uh, next sitting, you have to practice mocks under simulated exam conditions. That's exactly why under the premium package, we are offering, offering you the opportunity to attempt each mock via the exam platform, which had been developed akin to the Pearson VUE system, which you'd uh, encounter at your real exam. So when we are providing these services, why not use them, okay? Because, uh, if you adhere to uh, your own methodology, if you are being lazy, you can't pass this examination. So instead, uh, try to attempt each mock exam under real exam conditions via our exam platform. And uh, another problem is lack of uh, uh, technical or theoretical knowledge, uh, especially uh, uh, the students who are coming through the exemption routes, the master's gateway program or FLP, although you have done some type of a qualification, um, it could it could be a, a degree program, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. But mind you, these are academic qualifications. So in academic qualifications, uh, in order to gain marks or in order to pass these uh, uh, academic qualifications, you need to just do assignments or do presentations. There might be, you know, written exams as well, but predominantly uh, these uh, qualifications are based on assignments as well as presentation. So you have some time to conduct your own research. Even if you do not attend lectures, you can utilize Google, chat GPT or whatever, uh, you know, conduct your own research. You have some time to um, 
uh, uh, you know, do up your assignments. You have time to prepare for your presentations. However, that's not the case with a professional qualification. At a professional qualification, just because you know your theory, you can't pass. You need to focus on your application skills as well. So, you know, you have to understand uh, some type of an issue faced by the company by reading through the scenario presented. And for each of the issues highlighted, you have to come up with your own evaluations or recommendations utilizing your theoretical knowledge. So in such an environment, if you lack theoretical knowledge, there's absolutely no way that you'd pass this exam. Especially if you gained less than 70 marks in your previous sitting, then that indicates, uh, then it indicates that uh, you lack theoretical knowledge or there are, there's, uh, there are gaps in uh, 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 theoretical knowledge. So when it comes to E2, uh, if you're coming through the Master's Gateway program or the FLP program, um, these E2 related elements are usually covered in an academic qualification. But when it comes to F2 and P2, you need to really learn theory because these elements are actually not covered in depth within uh, uh, um, an academic qualification. So you need to focus on these elements and the best way to learn theory is by watching our master classes because uh, within seven weeks you can't get everything done, uh, everything done in the sense you can't you know refer to uh, the textbooks and whatnot because you would have seen the study packs they are huge you can't go through all these study packs um, uh, you can't uh, conduct your own uh, um, uh, research or your own studies instead the best way to learn theory and improve application skills is to watch the master classes. Uh, you'd understand what I'm talking about once I conduct the third webinar, which is happening next Saturday. So if you are clueless about F2 and P2, forget about passing in Feb, you know, and um, if, if you are uh, not investing on uh, the master classes, then you'd have to spend a considerable amount of time to improve uh, knowledge on your own, which would take something like six months, nine months, or even uh, a year. Okay, so if you feel that you're, if you if if you gain less than seventy marks, you can overcome this issue by watching our master classes. And another shortcoming is uh, with regards to application of knowledge. So as I mentioned earlier, just because you know your theory, you cannot pass this examination. Instead, you have to utilize this theoretical knowledge and apply it to the information presented in each and every scenario. Um, so again, the best way to improve your application skills are by uh, uh, watching the master classes and referring to the answer plans which we have developed. And we said, uh, and I said that after receiving a tutor, tutor feedback, you'd know on a subtask by subtask basis whether you have done a good job or not. So uh, when you understand uh, the subtasks in which your success rate was low, you are supposed to redevelop answer plans. So after redeveloping answer plans, you are supposed to compare it to the answer plans which we provide at TCS to understand what your shortcomings are. Further understand what your shortcomings are, then you'd realize that there is a significant level of improvement. So in order to improve um, technical knowledge and uh, overcome issues with uh, application, you have to watch master classes, refer to tutor feedback, and redevelop answer plans. Uh, and uh, your fresh answer plans needs to be uh, uh, need to be compared with uh, our own answer plans so that you understand uh, or so that you revise and improve uh, uh, on a weekly basis. An inappropriate answer answering and time management technique is a killer. So in order to overcome these two issues, uh, you need to attend the third webinar, which is happening next Saturday. So there are hordes of students out there right after reading the question, they'd start typing the fully fledged answer and halfway through, they'd realize that they're headed in the wrong direction. And because of that, they would end up deleting the answer and you know they, they, they have to start from scratch. And when you know that you had wasted time, this leads to stress, stress leads to panic and you end up failing the examination. So why should you, you know, panic at the exam when everything's under your control? So in order to ensure that uh, you are in control, you have to stick to these answering and time management techniques, which I'll highlight in the upcoming webinar. Just because uh, you know these techniques, you cannot get them right. You have to keep practicing these things uh, when attempting each and every mock exam. So we have developed five mock exams 
in each mock exam, just like uh, in your real examination, there are four tasks. So four tasks into five mock exams comes up to 20 tasks. So you would be, if you practice all five mocks under exam conditions, you would keep on practicing answering and time management techniques 20 times over. That's enough and more practice for you to get it right at your real exam. And lack of evaluation could be, could be a killer. So especially if you are coming through the SEMA general route, and let's assume you go for the value pack. Uh, so under the value pack, you do not have access to the master classes and the answer plan. So in such an environment, uh, after attempting the mock, you would have to carry out your, evalu your own evaluations. You would have to refer to the suggested answers, then compare the suggested answers to your own answer to figure out the shortcomings within your answer. And you are not receiving tutor feedback if you go for the value pack. So in, in such an environment, you have to do all these things on your own. So if you feel that you are not uh, you know, best suited to carry out your own evaluations, uh, you are not in a position to understand uh, uh, shortcomings in your answer. And uh, you know by comparing uh, with the suggested answer, if you are not in a position to understand the shortcomings, then simply go for the premium package. And not adhering to a study plan is a killer. Most students, as I mentioned earlier, wait until the last two weeks uh, to, uh, you know, get set with preparations. But, uh, you know, you, you can't get all these things done because there's a lot to do. You can't attempt five mock exams within uh, just two weeks. Um, you know, a majority of students cannot achieve it. Only, you know, one or two students per batch might be able to do it. But always remember, you have your family commitments. Uh, you, you have work commitments, you might be running your own business. So with all these things, closer, closer to the exam, when you try to balance off, uh, you know, uh, studies, it becomes extremely cumbersome. So the most prudent thing to do is to stick to our study plan and start preparations now itself so that you'll be relaxing a week before the exam. All right. So, you know, I hope you guys uh, got an in-depth understanding about uh, reasons which leads to failure and for each uh, uh, issue i've come up with uh, recommendations or solutions and i hope you'd uh, you know conduct your own evaluation and uh, understand your shortcomings and stick to the guidelines which we provided okay so having said that uh, let me uh, remind remind you about the pass rate which we achieved for the august 2023 sitting uh, we achieved an 89% pass rate. Uh, you know, we are still in the process of uh, collab, uh, compiling uh, information pertinent to the November, November 2023 sitting. But uh, as of now, we are extremely happy about uh, the feedback which, are, which we have gotten from our students. Uh, and one of the students uh, actually achieved 117 marks, uh, uh, which is the highest mark uh, uh, one of our students had achieved for MCS in the previous sitting. We're extremely proud about it. And uh, uh, this student was uh, sticking to the study plan, attempted all five mocks, did a real job, uh, watched all the master classes, uh, gained something from the tutor feedback. So that's exactly why when the pass mark is just 80, uh, the, the these type of students gain more than 100 marks uh, at their real exam. Okay, any questions? You're welcome, Nosi. So uh, it seems like there aren't any more questions. So thank you very much, guys, for, uh, you know, raising all these concerns. Uh, you know, I'm overjoyed uh, that you asked all these questions from me um, because that's actually my job. It actually motivates me uh, when you guys are asking questions. And uh, having said that, it brings us to the end of uh, tonight's webinar. This was a long webinar, as I predicted. Um, so if you want to contact us, you can do it via our website, which is www.studyatcs.com, or you can simply send us an email over info at studyatcs.com or um, WhatsApp us on 7898464196. We are always ready to help you guys out. And uh, I invite you guys to uh, follow us on our social media handles. Uh, the recorded version of this webinar will be uploaded to our website under the free con free and paid content, as well as uh, the YouTube channel. So I ask you guys, uh, I invite you guys to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel so that you'll be uh, constantly kept notified whenever we upload uh, uh, the recorded version of a webinar. 
And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the pre-seen mind maps uh, uh, can be found via our TikTok handle. So on a daily basis, keep watching these three TikTok videos so that you keep uh, reminding yourself constantly uh, about the most important points highlighted within the pre-scene. So you need not memorize the pre-scene. Instead, by watching these three TikToks, uh, you can easily improve uh, your knowledge about the pre-scene. So having said that, it brings us to the end of uh, tonight's webinar. Thank you very much for joining in. And I hope you'd uh, take part of uh, the upcoming webinar, which is the most important webinar, answering and time management technique. You need to get these things right. So I hope to see you guys uh, next week, next Saturday at the same time. Um, and if you, you know, missed out on uh, uh, this webinar or a previous web webinar, please go watch the recorded version via our website. Thank you very much. Good night and take care.